Hello guys and welcome to another integral video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this awesome integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of sine of ln x over ln x dx. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at alternate methods to solve this integral. So generally the way it's done is either we'll convert sine to exponential form or we'll just put a little a in here and then differentiate a function with respect to a and do Feynman integration. Those are the methods used by uh, Maths 505, um, Flammable Maths, or Black Pen Red Pen, as I've seen this problem on YouTube. But today, we're going to try and t take a look at this from a different lens, and we're going to use some alternate methods to solve this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, we're going to do one solution using power series, and we're going to do another solution with substitution and the Laplace transform combined. So without further ado, let's jump right into the integration. All right, so for our first solution, we're going to be converting sine um, because we know sine has a component, like sine x has a component of x. That means that we can convert it to its power series and it'll have a component of ln x. So we can just divide that out and then we can integrate it and then we can uh, sol solve the series. So I'm going to show how we can do that. We're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of instead of sine of ln x, well, first one over ln x. And then we're going to put our sum here. I'm just going to say that uh, when I write sigma here, it means the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Our sum is going to be negative 1 to the n, ln x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial, because that's the power series for sine of x. All right, now we're going to interchange our integration and our sum, which is not very rigorous, but this is a integral video on YouTube, so it's not exactly very rigorous in general. So it's going to end up being the integral from 0 to 1. Actually, let's put all our stuff with n on the outside here. 0 to 1. And then instead of ln x to the 2n plus 1, we're just going to have ln x to the 2n because of this. Okay, now how can we solve this integral? Well, of course, in general, there will probably be a formula that you could just look up for the integral from 0 to 1 of ln x to some number. But today we're going to try and look at it in a different lens. We're going to try to derive that formula for ourselves. So let's first just think of the base case where um, we're looking at types of integrals from um, 0 to 1 of ln x to the k dx. So when k equals 0, this is just the integral from 0 to 1 of 1. So our integral is going to end up being 1. And when k equals 1, uh, that's a pretty well-known integral. You can solve it just using integration by parts. Our answer is going to be negative 1. And so let's see if we can find a relationship also using int uh, integration by parts between uh, these different integrals, at k and 0, k1, and eventually k2, k3, k4, and we can find a direct formula. So if we do integration by parts, we're going to integrate um, dx, and we're going to differentiate k, uh, ln x to the k. So we're going to end up with x ln to the kx, evaluated at 0 and 1. Now at 1, ln x to the k is just going to be um, 0, so that one's going to disappear. And the one at 0 will also disappear, and that's a pretty simple limit. Um, I'm not going to prove it today, but if you guys want to, I would... Uh, it's definitely a great exercise. So this is going to go to 0. And what we're going to subtract is we're going to differentiate ln x to the k. So there's going to be a k in the front. And then ln x to the k minus 1. And then we're going to have this x here, right? But when we differentiate ln x to the k, it, we're also going to have um, an x on the bottom. So those two are going to cancel. So as you can see, uh, if we just call this ik, we can see that ik equals negative k ik minus 1. So if we just use this as a general formula, let's plug in i of 2. Well, we already have i1, so it's just going to be negative 2 times i1. So when k equals 2, it's going to be negative 2 times negative 1, which is just 2. We can continue using this formula. It's recursive, uh, so when k equals 3, it's going to end up being negative 6. When k equals 4, it's going to be end, end up being 24. So as you can see, this is just calculating 
negative 1 to the n, n factorial, or I'm sorry, negative 1 to the k, k factorial. It's alternating, multiplying by negative 1 each time, and it's also multiplying by each um, positive integer. So i k equals negative 1 to the k, uh, k factorial. Okay, now all that's left is to plug it back into our infinite sum. So uh, in this case, k equals 2n, so i of 2n. Um, this part's going to disappear because um, negative 1 raised to an even power is just 1, and then it's just going to be 2n factorial. All right, so now we're going to plug that in right here, negative 1 to the n, 2n factorial, or 2n plus 1 factorial. And of course, 2n factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial is just 1 over 2n plus 1. So this is going to end up being negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. And so if we write out the first few terms, this is going to be, of course, remember this is from n equals 0 to n equals infinity. We're going to have 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth, so on and so forth. So this is the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the odd numbers. This is a pretty well-known sum, and that means that this integral actually evaluates to pi over 4. And that's our answer. But we're not done for this video because uh, we have another method that we're going to try. In case you don't know the power series or this isn't something that you would think of, there's other things that you can always do. You don't have to know Feynman integration. You don't have to know power series. You don't have to know contra integration. You can use whatever method you like to solve the problem as long as it works. So we're going to take a look at this other method, which is going to be substitution and then using the Laplace transform. Okay, so let's start with our integral. The integral from 0 to 1 of sine ln x over ln x dx. Now in this case, the obvious substitution would be ln x because we have, um, it, we have it twice here in our integrand and we don't have anything that's not in terms of ln x. So we're going to go ahead and do that. ln x equals u and e to the u equals x, and dx equals e to the u du. All right, when we change our bounds, we're going to do the integral from negative infinity to 0 of sine of u over u times e to the u du. And this looks pretty similar to our uh, Dirichlet integral. So if we just uh, set u to uh, negative t, we're going to have uh, bind bounds that make a lot more sense. Instead of negative infinity to 0, we'll have 0 to infinity. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it's going to be the integral from infinity to 0. Um, sine of negative u is just negative sine of u and uh, negative u. So those are going to cancel because we're going to have a negative sign from here and a negative sign from here. So those are going to cancel. And we're going to have e to the negative uh, t, sine of t over t, and uh, negative dt. And we'll just absorb this minus sign into our integral here, switch our bounds. Okay, now we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t sine t over t dt. Okay, so one thing we can do here is we can put a little miniature a here, and we can do Feynman integration with that, and we will get our answer. That'll work out pretty nicely, but that's not actually not what I want to do here, because um, Feynman integration was the method that was originally used to solve this problem, and we want to do something different. So another thing I can do is I can look at this part right here. Um, we have sine of t over t here, and we're multiplying that by e to the negative t, and we're integrating it from 0 to infinity. What does that sound like to you? Well, really, all this represents is the Laplace transform of sine of t over t, where s equals 1. Because when s equals 1, we're going to be multiplying by e to the negative t and then integrating from 0 to infinity, right? So all we have to find is the Laplace transform of sine of t over t. Now, um, hopefully you know this rule. The Laplace transform of f of t over t is just the integral from s to infinity of f of u du where um, f of u is the Laplace transform, where um, I should say um, I should say f of s is just the Laplace transform of f of t. 
Now we know that the Laplace transform of sine of x, or sine of t, I should say, is actually, um, the Laplace transform of sine of x is 1 over s squared plus 1. So this um, Laplace transform is equal to the integral from s to infinity. In this case, s is 1, so we can just go ahead and replace that right there. So the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And this is just uh, inverse tangent of s and inverse tangent of u. Evaluated at infinity and n1, which is pi over 2 minus pi over 4, which gives us our answer, pi over 4. So that's a quick demonstration of how to use two different methods of aside from Feynman integration, aside from converting something into its exponential form, uh, to get this really awesome integral and this really cool answer. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you had a lot of fun, and I'll see you in the next video.